Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers degrees of unsaturation, also known as index of hydrogen deficiency. Each pi bond or ring that's present in an organic molecule is considered a degree of unsaturation. This is a feature that affects its formula. Let's take a look at alkanes to start with. Acyclic alkanes are saturated species. They're saturated with hydrogen atoms. In other words, these molecules could not fit any more hydrogens on without breaking carbon-carbon bonds. They have structures with the general formula CnH2n plus 2. As an example, let's take a look at hexane. Here's the structure of hexane. It has six carbons, therefore has six times two, 12 plus two equals 14 hydrogens. This molecule is saturated with hydrogens because you couldn't fit any more hydrogens on here without breaking carbon-carbon bonds to make new carbon-hydrogen bonds. It has a formula C6H14. Let's take a look now at alkenes. Alkenes are unsaturated with hydrogen atoms. They could actually hold more hydrogen atoms. They have the general formula CnH2n. And as an example, let's take a look at one hexene. This molecule has a carbon-carbon double bond in it, and you'll notice there's a carbon-carbon double bond that's taken the place of two of the hydrogens that were present in the alkane. It has the formula C6H12 which is two hydrogens less than the alkane. This is a degree of unsaturation, this double bond. You could also call these molecules deficient in hydrogen atoms, hence the index of hydrogen deficiency term that is used as a synonym for degrees of unsaturation. Interestingly though, cyclic alkanes also count as unsaturated. They could actually hold more hydrogen atoms also. They have the same general formula as alkenes, CnH2n, as an example, let's take a look at cyclohexane. Cyclohexane has six carbons and actually has 12 hydrogens. That is two times the number of carbon atoms. This molecule could actually fit two more hydrogens. If you were to break one of the carbon-carbon bonds and replace that with bonds to hydrogens, then you would get to the alkane formula. The point of this slide is that formula is related to these elements of unsaturation. And if you know the formula, you can work back to the number of double bonds and rings. Each pi bond or ring is considered a degree of unsaturation. Let's take a look at the formula for degrees of unsaturation. Degrees of unsaturation is equal to two times the number of carbons minus the number of hydrogens minus the number of halogen atoms if present plus the number of nitrogens if present plus two. That term gets divided by two and then that's the degrees of unsaturation. Here's a key to the terms in the equation. For purposes of this equation, you can just ignore oxygen and sulfur atoms. They don't actually contribute to degrees of unsaturation. There's a number of synonyms of degrees of unsaturation. It's also called index of hydrogen deficiency. You'll see that term a fair bit. Also, double bond equivalence gets used periodically, and unsaturation number is also used a fair bit as well. So all of these terms refer to the same kind of calculation to determine the number of pi bonds or rings. Let's take a look at an example. Here's a molecule that has carbons, hydrogens, a nitrogen, and a chlorine in it. It has the formula C5H4NCl. With this formula, we can plug in the degrees of unsaturation equation and get out a number. Degrees of unsaturation is two times the number of carbons, which is five, minus the number of hydrogens, which is four, minus the number of halogens, which is one, plus the number of nitrogens, which is one, plus two, all divided by two, and that equals four. This molecule has four degrees of unsaturation because it has three pi bonds within the ring, and then it has a ring. That's the fourth degree of unsaturation. That's how you count them. Let's go through another example. Here's the degrees of unsaturation equation again. If you're given a formula C4H8O2, how many degrees of unsaturation does it have? If we plug this formula into the equation, we get two times four minus eight minus zero, because there's no halogens in this molecule, plus zero, there are no nitrogens either, plus two, all divided by two, equals one. That means that this molecule contains either a ring or a double bond. That could be useful information if you're trying to solve the structure of an unknown compound. At least you would know to look for either a double bond or a ring. Here are a few possibilities of structures that would fit this formula. You could have a carbon-oxygen double bond, as in this carboxylic acid. You could have a carbon-carbon double bond, as is present in this hydroxy ether. You could also have a ring, where in this case the two oxygen atoms are in the ring. They don't have to be, but here they are. 
And here's another example with a ring with one oxygen in the ring and one oxygen outside of the ring. And these are just a few possibilities. There are a huge number of possible structures that would fit this formula, but they all have one thing in common. They all have either a ring or a double bond, and that's what the equation helps you understand. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.